problem if I put it here. Uh, are, you, are you okay there? Uh, it's okay. better. Put eh? uh, it like this. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, today we have a really awesome topic. Uh, as we wait for people, maybe Salim, this is tell us something, Mana, for a minute or two as we wait for the other guys. Today we have a very, very, very wonderful topic. We'll be speaking about good things mm -hmm. that keep people out of heaven. Mm -hmm. There are so many good things that uh, are keeping people out of heaven. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing people have never realized is that <laughs> the Bible is very clear. Actually, I, I, I don't know how to explain, but mm -hmm. the Bible means what it says, mm -hmm. and it says what it means. Mm -hmm. And uh, those people try to tell you that there are some deep things and they're like this. The Bible tells us there's nothing in the Bible mm -hmm. which is of any uh, private interpretation. Mm -hmm. So if it just tells you that during this and this time, this and this happened, mm -hmm. and this and this happened, mm -hmm. and it will repeat itself, then it's mm -hmm. exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So today we'll be speaking about good things that keep people out of heaven. Mm -hmm. Do you know there are some? Yes. So I, I like to ask you to stay till the end of this video, and you're going to learn so much. Mm -hmm. You'll be so much inspired by this. Mm -hmm. Salim, tell us something. Uh, the, yeah, hello, guys. Uh, the, the topic is very educative mm -hmm. and informing. And uh, I believe God has called us at such a time so that we can expose the truth mm -hmm. and bring out the definite idea, basically the plan of God mm -hmm. concerning us. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, as we talk about the hindrances uh, of what, uh, of what uh, the devil is trying to use mm -hmm. so that we can, we can lose the sight of seeing the truth of God in our lives, mm -hmm. I think it's proper to understand that uh, we are living in times whereby we we are to know uh, what God God is telling us and and the desire for God. Yeah, yeah. God wants wants us to prosper here on earth. He wants us to to have all these things mm -hmm. because He created them. They are in us. Yeah. It's for us to manifest these things. But these things should not be our focus. Mm. Our focal. Uh, uh, Point. Uh, point and um, not really desperation, but desire yeah. is to focus on God. Mm. Focus on the one who giveth, yeah. not on what has been given. Mm -hmm. Because what has been given is perishable. Yeah. And uh, just like our, our physical body is perishable. Mm. But at the end of the day, it is God whom we should focus on. Mm -hmm. Not on these things that are perishable. Yeah, it's just like uh, the Bible says that food is for the stomach and stomach is for the food, but God will destroy destroy both. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important for each one of us to realize yeah. the importance of understanding uh, the desire of God for man. Awesome, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. So let me let me ask you, Salem. Yes, uh, yes. Have you been in a situation whereby you find yourself at one point in life, mm -hmm. you are so much focused on some things which are vanity in some way, and mm -hmm. then you had a turnaround mm -hmm. after maybe reading a certain verse or mm -hmm. realizing or just having a solitary moment mm -hmm. with yourself, mm -hmm. and you realize, uh, why, mm -hmm. why did, do I have, like, okay, let me just uh, bring this on. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you told me a story today about... Um, it happened and a situation and mm -hmm. you know and you found yourself in a jail cell mm -hmm. some time back and mm -hmm. you're there in solitary way mm -hmm. and you ask yourself by by the way why have i been chasing vanities now mm -hmm. i'm here everything mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I've, I've found myself in such situations mm -hmm. and uh sometimes it's, it's it's because of the desperations we have and uh, uh let me not call them desires but uh, last, yeah. there's a there are certain last that we do have because mm -hmm. there are certain accomplishments mm -hmm. that we want to see in our lives. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We hurriedly focus on what, uh, like I said earlier, what is perishable. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when we focus so much on what is uh, of, uh, basically what is vain, mm -hmm. uh, as much as it's profitable for us here. Mm -hmm. But as believers, we know that as much as we hold these things, mm -hmm. 
these things they're just but for uh, for a moment yeah, yeah. Uh, just like money you have money today but at the end of the day mm-hmm. you sit down and and you ask yourself mm-hmm. why am i chasing on these things yeah why am i chasing after these things do uh, do they really matter? Will, matter will they really benefit me yeah but but at the end of the day your situation at that particular moment they will be sorted because of the things you're looking for yeah. but uh they will not give you that satisfaction yeah. they will not give you that mm. for lack of a better word that ambience yes. to 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 really have uh that basically satisfaction to continue uh with with the life properly yeah. so at the end of the day mm. you, you find yourself thinking through these things yes. you get yourself into the word of god and you find that as much as these things are important yeah. as much as these things are beneficial uh, beneficial for us here yeah. physically here on earth yes. money is important yeah. all these things are important but there's one more big thing which is yeah, important but they, 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 there's a, there's another level yes and, and that level is having that satisfaction that is from god that you know mm-hmm. after I've, I've done all these things mm-hmm. You know, I always say there are three days in our lives, three seasons in our lives: morning, mm. after uh, afternoon or noon time, mm. and evening. Yeah. That is when you're born, yeah. and then here, kapakatikati, you you're married, and all these things are happening. Yeah. And then there's evening where you get you, you grow old, mm. and everything that you worked for, mm. everything makes no sense. They make no sense. So, uh, guys, um, I think we should be getting started. Uh, we're just uh, doing a, a little bit of, um, you know, analyzing uh, good things, various good things that um, we have always uh, felt about and, you know, treasured in our lives. Now, today, I decided to talk about good things that keep people out of heaven, that will actually keep people out of heaven. So, these are very much a controversial topic, and most people might wonder, do you really mean good things can take people out of heaven? Mm -hmm. And uh, when I look in the Bible, I see so many uh, examples whereby we see good things uh, keeping people out of, you know, the presence of God and out of heaven. And uh, you see many people, uh, they do good things, but they don't focus on what is really important. Like, of course, uh, going to work, taking children to school, doing all these things which are uh, well, according to our eyes, they're really good. But have you given God the chance mm-hmm. so that he can be the first in your life? Because the Bible says, uh, put God first. You see, uh, in everything that you do, always make sure that God is first. Is God the first in your life? Mm-hmm. Have you given him that chance because also there's another verse which says seek ye the kingdom of god first Mm -hmm. and everything else will be added unto you Mm -hmm. so are you really uh, putting god first in everything that you do or are you just uh, sitting down there and just saying Mm -hmm. uh you know god will come whatever time he wants or Mm -hmm. let it be the way it will be Mm -hmm. now i want to speak about these good things that Mm -hmm. keep people out of heaven yeah uh and uh, we can start from the book of Luke Luke 17:26 mm-hmm. uh Luke 17:26 it says um and and it's and as it was in the days of Noah mm-hmm. so shall it also be in the days of the son of man mm-hmm. as it was in those days the days of Noah mm-hmm. it will also be in the days when Jesus will come back mm-hmm. so how was it in the days of Noah mm-hmm. how were people doing their things mm-hmm. let's not uh, look on the angle of uh, you know people being evil and people doing uh, going against God let's look at the angle of um, Of course, not all of them were, you know, killing people and doing this, but there are other people who are just busy with different things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bible tells us very clearly on what really happened, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, It continues, verse 27, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, Mm -hmm. they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark Mm -hmm. and the flood came and destroyed them all. Mm -hmm. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, okay? They did eat, 
They drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. Now, do you hear anything which is bad there? No. These people, are they are eating, they are drinking. Drinking does not mean they are taking bad drinks. Maybe they are drinking water, okay? They, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. These are good things. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, the Bible is very clear here about exactly uh, what you should do that you should put God first. Now, the Bible tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He used to preach righteousness. Hey, guys, live in the right way. This is what God is saying. And they could see Noah every day, uh, you know, nailing uh, nailing the ark every day for 120 years. You see, others could laugh and tell you, hey, old man, you, you're really mixed up. <laughs> old man, you're confused. You, you mean you're nailing this? They, and imagine from Genesis till Noah, there had never been rain. There's no place where we see any documentation of rain, okay? So it had never rained from Adam till now. We, we don't see anywhere where it's written unless maybe another thing that we don't know. So it means these people are not even used to rain. And then here is Noah telling them, God told me there's going to be heavy rain which will flood the whole earth. Mm -hmm. So guys, prepare and do what is right and enter into the ark. You see, the ark that time was a literal place. They are seeing this is the ark. Noah is trying to fix up uh, the ark, but these guys don't want to see anything. They just say, ah, we're busy with our things. We're just busy here and there. You see, Noah, I'm, I'm, I'm rushing on something. I'm doing on this and this. Please, Noah, don't. come on. I, I'll join you tomorrow. You know, I'm busy here and there. And most of those people is the same, same way also, which is told concerning Lot. The time of Lot, people are just doing normal things. It's saying that they sold, they planted, they built it, they drank, they ate. Normal things, good things, but they never realized when Lot was coming out of uh, Sodom. And after that, God rained that city with, you know, fire and brimstone and all of them perished. And then likewise, the same way, Noah entered the ark, he closed the door, they were just probably watching him. And actually, uh, after the, the ark, Noah entered the ark with all the animals, and mm -hmm. they stayed for seven days. Okay. Now, imagine... Seven good days, they're just in the ark. Probably, I don't know if it is possible or not. These people, if maybe they could have changed their mind and just said, okay, no, please <laughs> allow us in. Maybe they could have gotten in, but they were just saying, this old man is really a fool. He's already closed himself inside for seven days. Does he think really there'll be something? You see? So probably that could have been a chance that God could have given these people in case they want to repent. You see, repenting is changing of mind. They change their mind and they say, okay, let me enter. Furthermore, this guy has been here for three days. Eh? Mm -hmm. Let me enter. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Okay. But these people, they hardened their hearts. They just said, ah, Noah, let me do my things. Mm -hmm. In case we see the rain dropping, eh, I can always tell Noah, come on, you're just one one call away. The same way people say it nowadays that, mm, let me just relax. The moment I hear is as if Jesus is coming, yeah? I just call my pastor. Hey, Pasi, hey, you pray for me faster. It will not be the same way that you think. Mm -hmm. That time when it comes, <laughs> you see the Bible says, and God shut them in. Mm -hmm. God shut them in, meaning God closed the, 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 the opening of salvation mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. So there was no way you could be saved anymore. It was closed and locked, and that was it. Mm. And these people, they were left there with the things that they were doing, farming, giving in marriage, doing all those kind of things, and doing good things. But they were left off. Why? Because they never put God first, and they never listened. They never waited and even asked themselves, okay, Noah, um, just tell us, what exactly are you talking about? Tell us about this God. What, what did he actually say? You see, if you spare some time and just say, let me go to the Bible. Let me go to the scripture. You mean there's a rapture? You mean, let me let me just see, you know? Let me just see what the Bible says. God, let me hear your word. You see that time Noah was speaking, uh, God was speaking through Noah. He was a preacher of righteousness. So uh, probably he was just there and uh, explaining and explaining. Maybe they could have said, let's, let's, let's just tell us your foolishness. Just tell us whatever you think. You see, 
there are so many people who like for example whenever we do bible studies maybe we hang out with people and try to speak about the word of god there are always people who are full of excuses no today uh, today i'm doing this tomorrow i'm doing that today I'm... you see fine you can have excuses once in, in a while but at least try and give god some time give him some time let hear what he is saying to you maybe he's just telling you something that he, he just want to bring you out from some trouble somewhere so just the same way it was in the days of noah in the days of lot so shall it be in the days of the coming of the son of man let's also check another story here uh, uh luke 14 14 16 luke 14 verse 16 there's a really really good story here uh luke 14 16 it says uh, a certain man made a great supper. Now, this guy made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come for all things are now ready. Now, this guy, uh, he makes some supper, some food, some nice dinner. And he says, okay, it's not supper time. Go and call so-and-so. Okay, let's, let's hear this. Okay, verse 18. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. People started making excuses. Mm -hmm. The first one said unto him, I've bought a piece of ground and I must uh, and I must need to go and see it. I pray that you please have me excused. I've just bought a piece of land. I need to go and check, you know, the surveyor, the lawyer. Please, I can't come. I can't. It's, it's really important for me. I can't come now. I'm really busy with the paperwork. Mm -hmm. I'm busy with this and that. I have to go and see. There's a, a new property that I'm... This, this guy must have been a real estate developer. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You see, I'm really busy at this mm -hmm. time. It's, I can't now. Okay? Mm -hmm. Verse 19. And another one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. And I go to prove them. I pray that you have me excused. This guy is a farmer. He's saying, okay, uh, I've just bought this uh, oxen and I want to go and prove if they can really work. You see, mm -hmm. uh, just excuse me for today. Excuse me. Excuse. I can't come. Mm -hmm. They give excuses. Nice stuff. Okay. Another one said, uh, verse 19. And another one, uh, okay, verse 20. And another one said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Come on. <laughs> I'm heading to a honeymoon. Uh, you see, I have a new wife, I, which is really good. God tells us, get married, live you know, a faithful life, mm -hmm. do whatever you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. He also made excuse. Mm -hmm. Verse 21, so that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said unto his servant, go out and quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Mm. Hmm? Go and bring any other, you know, mm. any other person out there. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the blind. Mm. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. Mm. And there, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Mm. Bring any other person, bring them, mm. bring them. For I say unto you that none of those men which are uh, bidden shall taste of my supper. Mm. He's angry saying, really? I made a supper for you? Mm. I, I, I made you the chief guests? Mm. You did not even want to come? You're giving me excuses? I've just bought a cow. I've bought a piece of land. I've, I've just married. I've done this and that. Mm. I bet you that none of those people will taste of my supper. Mm. All right? So now let's look at that story. Mm -hmm. Of course, the story is talking about the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. uh, how uh, God has chosen them. He had put them, you know, uh, in a high table, a high place, and they refused and they killed Jesus. And they said, oh, we don't want your stories. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, God changed the strategy and he said, I will go to the heathen. I will go to the people who are not even mm -hmm. considered anything. I'll go to them and bring them from the highways, from what, the lame, the maimed, mm. anyone out there who was not even supposed to be saved. Mm. Even if a Muslim wants to be saved, bring him on. Mm. Even if he's an Indian, bring him on. Even if he's who, bring him on. Bring everyone who wants to be saved, okay? Mm. Because the people who I had prepared for them, those people, mm. if they will not close whatever they're doing and they come because they're still making excuses, mm. then let it be told and known up to this day. They will not test of that summer. Mm. Now look at that story. Mm. Excuses. Mm. 
These are the same excuses that we make every day. Whenever God is calling us to his service, he's calling us and telling us, please come. I have good things prepared for you. You're always making excuses. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, I've just bought a piece of land. You see, come on, I, I just I, I just put in the internet on my, my, you know, I have home fiber now. I have to do some studies online. Mm-hmm. Come on, I, I'm busy. My job, my this, my that. And you can always find time to go and meet up with friends. You can always find time to go and catch up with other things which are really not making any sense. But whenever God calls you to give you the free gift, the free gift of salvation, people can run for any offer. If today we have a... Uh, we have an offer, you know, pizza offer or something like that. You will spare that time, terrific Tuesday, and run for the offer. But you can never spare time to run for the offer, the free gift of, of, of salvation, because you keep on saying, ah, you see, God, come on, it's, it's not the way you think. I'm, 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 I'm just doing something which is legit. Even you, you can see. You, know, you, you see, that? that's how people say, even you can see. I was really busy. I was really busy. I was writing a book. I was really busy. I was clearing my masters. I was really busy. I was, you know, painting my new house. I was busy doing these good things. But trust you me, these good things, most of them will send people packing to hell. Because the Bible tells us very well, unless you know the truth, the truth is the one which will set you free. So how are you going to be saved if you don't know the truth? How are the people supposed to get enter into the ark? If they never even gave audience to Noah, Mm -hmm. if you don't give audience to the Bible, how are you going to know the truth? Mm -hmm. How will you be able to understand this is what God is saying? This is the, this is the true salvation. This is how someone is supposed to be saved. How are you going to be saved? And you don't give even give God the audience. You're really busy with different things. You're really busy with different things. You're, you're, you're running over and over. How you see, God does not tell you, give me all your time. Mm -hmm. He tells you just, just give me, you see, g- give me some time. Let me just explain to you. You see, the gospel is not all about sit down here. Let me pin you on the wall. And no. And even the Bible is very clear. Most people have forgotten God. hundred percent. They have forgotten God. I don't know this. Oh yeah. It's a mosquito. Mm. People have really forgotten God. hundred percent. They don't want to hear anything to do with God. Let me read for you. Jeremiah 2.32. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah 2.32. Jeremiah 2, verse 32, it says, can a maid forget her ornaments? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a woman who say, oh, I've forgotten my lipstick? No. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen uh, someone saying, oh, I've forgotten my ornaments, my earrings, my what? It's very rare. They they will never forget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride attire? Mm -hmm. You're a bride of Christ. You're supposed to be a bride of Christ. You're supposed to be married to Christ. Can you say that? Oh, Today is my wedding day. I forgot my wedding dress. Can you ever forget? <laughs> I know l- ladies are here. Esther, you're watching here. C- can you really forget your utter? It's not possible. Mm-hmm. See what God is saying here. Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Mm-hmm. People have forgotten mm-hmm. me. They don't want to hear about me. Anytime I say, you see, I'm calling you so that I can give you the, the gift, the free gift of salvation. You don't want you say, ah, no, 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 please, I'm really busy. Please, I don't want this. Please, I'm having a meeting. Please, I'll be, I'll be traveling. I'll be with some people. I'll be doing this and that. People don't want to, he- they don't want to hear the truth. And as the days we see the days approaching, we should have even be more closer to God as we see the days approaching. All these other things are vanities. We are chasing after wind. Have you ever seen what we call people chasing after wind? Mm -hmm. You're running, you're running, you're running. You can't really say you're running for what? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us very well, Mm -hmm. God is the one who provides for his people. He gives you, he says, do the birds of the air work, yet they eat? It doesn't say that you don't work. It says that he will provide for them. Yes, you will see them running up and down just to, you know, collect some few things. But they don't work. It's like they collect what God has already prepared for them. The lilies of the field, yes, they might have roots. They are really, you know, finding food here. But do they even work? Do you see uh, lily of the field cultivating or doing anything? But yet they blossom. How much more important are you to God? If you tell God, 
God, um, I just want to look at your word. I want to understand you from the depth. Please show me something that I can do which will give me some time to spare for you. Trust you me, God is going to open a way. Because you see, in Psalms 127, let me show you this. Psalms 127, uh, a very, very, very wonderful verse here. Psalms 127, verse 2. 127, verse 2. It says, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. It's called the bread of sorrows because mm -hmm. you're rushing up and down, up and down. You've forgotten everything else. you rather kill someone to get that money. Mm -hmm. You're eating the bread of sorrows. For, it, for, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Mm -hmm. God is the one who gives his beloved sleep. Mm -hmm. When he talks about sleep, it means satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard that there is no sleep for the wicked? Mm -hmm. They toil every day, they hustle every day, they run every day. They, they, they can never have peace with themselves because they are running, because they are wicked. Mm -hmm. They are wicked. They, everything that they think about in their minds is, how am I going to make that next money? I'd rather kill someone to make that money. So it is called the bread of sorrows. They are rushing after the bread of sorrows. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear the truth. And God tells you, it is in vain that you run up and down. Mm -hmm. Relax. Let mm -hmm. me show you where the whole thing is. Mm -hmm. Because God says he will provide our needs. Our needs, not our wants. Mm -hmm. Our wants are luxuries. Our needs, he knows our needs. Our needs are food, shelter, clothing, the things that you need. And that's all that you need. Why, why, why does God not tell us that he'll provide our wants? Because if you're too much satisfied, you have like, a thousand acres, a thousand cars, you know, your buildings and all that, you'll forget about him and heaven. You'll say, I, I don't want to leave this place where I'm living and I have all these things because, come on, I don't want that heaven right now because hey, my, my businesses, you see, my, my plots of lands, my this and this and this. But God wants us to focus on him only. He tells us that he provides our needs so that when our needs are met, when we have eaten, we, we have some strength. We can go and tell the gospel to someone else. We can move from one area to another. We have clothes. We are not naked. We don't look, you know, we don't, we don't get embarrassed. We have some place to, to, you know, to cover our head. That's the basic needs that we need. Look at the apostles, the apostles of Jesus Christ. Is there any place where you hear Apostle Paul was extremely rich or Apostle this and that was, uh, you know, used to write and he, no, we don't see all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But today's modern Christianity is all about vanities. It's all about chasing sorrows, chasing the bread of sorrows. You know, have this, have that, have that. You better do anything. Even if it's in church, people would rather uh, trick people into giving them money than to sit down and say, God Almighty, you're the one who created the heaven and the earth. And I know you'll provide for me today. Mm -hmm. Let me go and speak your word. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm speaking two to three people, mm -hmm. even if I'm saying what or what, please God provide for me. Show me the way out. Help me in whatever that I am doing. Most of the pastors and most of the people, what they do is they run and they try to find shortcuts to do things. What if God only called you for one person? Mm -hmm. That's the same way I say, even if this Bible study, I'm doing it and I have only one person or two people or whatever it is. What if God called me for only one person? Mm -hmm. You, you see, you, you try to put other things and try to say, let me try to help God. You see, let me try to trick people to come. Let me try to do this and this and trick people. And pro probably I'll have some more members and I'll make God happy. No, mm -hmm. the Bible tells us that mm -hmm. obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Do what you are called. God called you and he told you, uh, do A, B, C, D, go and preach the word to the lost. Mm -hmm. So if those lost people and the platforms that he has given you is maybe some Zoom like this or Facebook or somewhere else, go and preach to those people. What if God called you only for your own family, for your own husband, for your wife, for only your sisters and brothers, your parents? He called you for only them. And you, you're there busy running up and down and trying to create members. And that's why you see people running, going to Nigeria to go and pick, I don't know, some power so that people can come to church. You think you can help God? No, there's nothing that you can do to help God. God sends us to different assignments in different ways. What if that one person that you've preached to, he's the one who will uh, hear the message? And after hearing the message, he will go and tell another person who will even start maybe a ministry of a million people, you see? Mm -hmm. And during judgment day or during the day that you're in heaven with Jesus, you see a million people behind you and you ask, 
Jesus, how did these people come behind me? I only preached to three people. And he tells you, you remember that one person you preached to? He or she went and preached to another person. And that other person preached to other millions of people. And they're all behind you on the line. You see, God works his ways in miraculous way. So we need to focus on what God is telling us. We focus on doing the work of God. We focus on giving God the time. Because if we don't give God time, we keep on uh, running up and down and saying, I'd rather do whatever I can do. Let me go and finish this. Let me go and handle my situation. Let me go and handle this. At the end of the day, what is going to happen? You're going to be found not ready. You're going to be found you're just there. You're not ready. You don't know what has happened. This is the day the rapture is, has happened. You see, there are people who are called the tribulation saints. And the Bible says that to the church of Laodicea that you church, you think that you're rich, but you're really poor. You think that you have it all, but you're really naked and you have nothing. Mm -hmm. And God tells them, I dare you that you go and, you know, buy from me gold, mm -hmm. which is refined. Mm -hmm. Or uh, he also dares them and tells them, I want you to go and clean up yourselves and wear new robes. Mm -hmm. Now, who are these people wearing new robes? These are the tribulation saints who are going to wear new robes. The time, you see, most of the people who are in the prosperity kind of gospel, they think that they are chasing the true gospel, but most of them are only chasing wind. And the Bible tells us very well they are chasing vanities because we are told to store our wealth in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy. But most of these people, they want to say, I want to have this, I want to have this, I want to have this. Fine, it's good to have these things. But if God did not allow you to have these things, are you saying, are you going to say that there is no God? I'm going to say there's no God because God has not given you these things. That's why these people, the church of Laodicea, the church was corrupted. We think that they are wealthy and they're thinking that they have it all. God tells them you're naked, you're poor. You have nothing within you. I dare you to go and buy me gold, refined, and also wear new robes, new robes. So how are they going to wear these new robes? These are the tribulation saints. These are the people who will be cut off their heads. The moment they realize... Oops, we concentrated on good things. And we did the good things, good things, good things. And we forgot the truth. We never went to the Bible. We never went for a true Bible study. It was all about, I receive it, prophet. I receive it. I receive. Receive it for me. Oh, give me this. Give me this. I receive. I receive. You received and you received and you never once read your Bible and saw what the gospel was. And you receiving the good things, you forfeited what was really good, what was the gospel, which was supposed to teach you about the things of God and you be saved. And you never got saved because receiving does not mean you've been saved. Going to church does not mean you're saved. Repeating some prayer does not mean that you're saved. Doing good things does not mean that you're saved. You can only be saved by the salvation which is seen in Jesus Christ. And what he did at Calvary, death, burial, and resurrection, you believing in that is what gets you saved. So you'll be entangled in good things. And at the end of the day, the rapture comes and you're there and you're left and you say, oh my goodness, I did the good things and I forgot you. And this church of Laodicea, these people who knew some half truths, they are the ones who will be cleaning themselves with their own blood and wearing new white robes mm -hmm. through being, you know, their heads will be cut off during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I want to tell you is that don't be like the 10 foolish virgins mm -hmm. who knew that they are waiting for someone, but then <laughs> you're waiting for someone, but you're not even prepared. You just say, um, let me just wait. Let me just wait. Mm -hmm. Anything happens, anything goes, let me just wait. Mm -hmm. Come on. Don't be like them. Let, let, me, let me just show you the story of these foolish virgins eh? in Matthew 25, uh, verse 1. Let's just go there. I want to show you something here. And you see, these people are waiting for someone, but they're not even prepared. They're just saying, ah, whatever happens, 25, 1. Listen, then, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, okay, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They though were foolish took their lamps and took, with, took no oil with them. These are the foolish people. They only have half a gospel. They know, wow, Jesus saves. But they have never really understood how does he save. 
You see? You know Jesus saves, fine. There's salvation in Jesus. But do you know the procedure? You see, there's a procedure for everything. You have to understand, how does he save? Just saying that Jesus saves, you believe in Jesus. Even demons believe. In, they believe that Jesus is there. They even believe and tremble. They believe and tremble. But does it mean they are saved because they believe and they tremble? No, it doesn't mean that. There is a formula for you to be saved. So these 10 foolish virgins, they only knew one part of the story, but the other part they never knew, okay? So they never cared to understand. So they took no oil. So one part they did not do, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. The wise people know that Jesus saves and they know the formula of how he saves. Mm -hmm. You see, you can know Jesus saves, but you don't know the formula. You don't know the way. You don't know the style. You don't know how does he save us? What is our dispensation? How are we going to be saved in our dispensation right now? Our apostle, our apostle right now is uh, the apostle Paul in Romans uh, eleven thirteen. 13. He tells us that this is our apostle. In as much as I'm the apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my office. So our apostle right now, the apostle to the Gentiles is the apostle Paul. And he tells us right now, we are saved by the gospel of the cross. The message of the cross is what saves us. Is what saves us. How that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's how we are saved. That is what he tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Let's continue on this story. Uh, verse 6, uh, uh, verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept because the bridegroom, you know, he waited for some time. He did not come at the expected time. So ah, he said, okay, let's take a nap. Mm -hmm. Just the same way right now, people are waiting for Jesus so much, but then they are starting to say, ah, come on. We had that in 1988, there was a rapture. We had that uh, 1995 rapture was coming. We had 2000, you know, that was the end of the world. We had the 2020, that will be the end. Now we're in 2021. Do you think he will come? People are starting to say that. So people are starting to sleep, okay? But even if you're sleeping, you better sleep knowing the truth. You see, you can wait and say, ah, oh, okay, I think Jesus is not coming very soon. Let me, let me establish a new business. But at least you're establishing a new business knowing the truth. Mm -hmm. But the other people are saying, let me first do some business. I, I will think about the other part of the oil later on. You see, mm -hmm. the other part of the oil, I'll think about it later on. And that's where people go wrong. Because they are thinking... Uh, he may delay, so I, I don't have to worry about the other part of the oil. Let me just handle this first. And, you know, when I hear it's coming, eh, I can tell people very quickly, hey, Salim, tell me, how, how is someone said quickly, quick, please add me some oil. And by the time you're talking about the oil, people are already gone. People are already gone. There's no Salim, there's no who, there's no who, Keith is gone, everybody's gone. These Bible studies, you don't see them anymore. And you're like, oh, this guy used to give us some Bible studies. Where is he now? luckily probably some of them will be still online but you see the holy spirit will have gone so even understanding the bible will be very difficult when the holy spirit you see holy spirit is one who, who enlightens us on the bible we are able to understand things you see you cannot just uh, you can pick this but before i was saved i used to read this bible and understand nothing i could not really understand oh What's this Bible talking about? I could open pages and pages and I can't understand anything. But when I got saved and the Holy Spirit came inside me, then I started seeing the Bible in a different way. I can read and understand. I can read and, you know, things are popping up pop, 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 from the Bible and I can understand because the Holy Spirit is teaching. Now, if you're a foolish uh, virgin, you're waiting for Christ fine, but you don't have the other side of the gospel, which is the oil part. You only have one part, which is Jesus says, but you don't know how he saves. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be left behind. Now, see this, verse 7, mm, verse 6. And at the midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go out and meet him. Yet Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Please give us your oil. Our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so lest there be not enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves mm -hmm. and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they uh, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage supper and the door was shut mm -hmm. you go out oh, where is the gospel where is the gospel you don't understand if the door is shut people are gone okay 
and the door shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, <laughs> I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day or the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now, my friends, this is a very, very important uh, parable, which tells us how exactly it will be. Because the Bible says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgin. The kingdom will be likened unto. So this is a message of us getting prepared, getting ready. At least to know that Jesus saves, which every other person knows. Those who know that Jesus saves, at least they have one part of the gospel. They have one part because those who don't know if Jesus saves, then they, they, they are totally blind. They don't know anything. But at least you know Jesus saves. But then have some more oil, which is telling you how he saves. What is the formula? How does he save? What, what do I have to do to be saved? You see, uh, Nicodemus, I think it was Nicodemus, right? Mm -hmm. Who said, who asked Jesus, Lord? What must I, eh? it was Nicodemus, right? What must I do to be saved? Nicodemus had one part of the gospel, which was Jesus saves. I know this guy saves, but what must I do to be saved? That is likening, like you have the oil and also you, you, your light is, you know, the moment you know Jesus, Jesus is the light of the world. You have known him, he's the light. But now him being the light, do you have the oil to put the light, you know, I hope you understand the point. So the thing is this, you need to watch out and ask yourselves, am I really giving God the time? Am I really sparing time for God? Or am I always full of excuses, doing good things? Am I always chasing after vanities? Am I always chasing after things which do not make sense? I see people chasing BBI, chasing this and that, things which will never be anywhere near the kingdom of God. Imagine it. <laughs> Upigwe risasi and you go to heaven, I mean, or you meet God and he tells you, okay, why did you come here? Um, I was in a ODM rally and I was talking BBI. You, you look like a fool. At least be, 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 be persecuted because of the gospel or do some. You see, people are chasing after things you do not have any value on them. Mm -hmm. People are chasing after things which cannot even bring them close to God. Chase after things which are eternal. Mm -hmm. Chase after... I, I was I was telling people about the gospel and one of them shot me on the head and I died. And Jesus, I am here. You said you will reward us and you'll be there rewarding you and telling you, well done, my son. Well done, my daughter. You did it. You did it. You made it. Mm -hmm. Today, you are telling me about uh, John the Baptist mm -hmm. and how John the Baptist was, uh, you know, beheaded and all that and what really happened. And uh, you see, John the Baptist could not really understand. He's already in jail. His son was baptized. Jesus has been telling about his coming. And then until he sends even a message and says, guys, just go and ask Jesus, are you really the, 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 the person I've been prophesying about? Or is it another person? What did Jesus tell them? Go and tell them. The blind are seeing. The deaf are hearing. The lame are walking. <laughs> All right. So it is me. It is me. Don't worry. It's only that it is. Now the system has changed. Things have changed. Your reward is already done. Mm -hmm. The people you have already preached to, they are enough. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I were just discussing with Salim and saying, I think there's a reason why John the Baptist has, had, had to be beheaded. Because mm -hmm. just imagine if John the Baptist continued with his ministry, mm -hmm. preaching about you know salvation through immersion in water, mm -hmm. the, you get baptized for salvation. And Jesus is saying, another gospel you know there would be a lot of clash of things mm -hmm. and i think that's why god just decided you you have finished your part mm -hmm. you have baptized jesus you have said that uh, prepare the way now the way is here the way has already come jesus mm -hmm. so be cut off forget your reward is in heaven now another start of another dispensation mm -hmm. you see how god works mm -hmm. And uh, he plans everything. So when only you give him time and you spare some time, and I will really, really urge you guys to spare as much time as possible. Don't be this kind of people who are always doing good things. Good things, like I've told you in the time of Noah, doing good things, planting, farming, giving out in marriage, doing good things, purely good things. But they never gave God even one second. They never listened mm -hmm. to Noah. Just to hear, okay, what is God actually talking about concerning this ark? 
can we hear something the same way people don't want time they don't have no time to listen to the word of god they have time to do everything else to run after you know i'm taking my child to school i'm doing this i'm doing that please do what is right and i believe this one will be something which will really really great impact something positive unto you i believe this has been really a blessing let me hear uh a, a couple of comments on maybe what uh, you have understood uh probably tunazanza na hapa online the guys who are online esther esther i mean sorry tell us what what you have understood from the story uh good evening everyone hi good evening i hope everyone is doing well uh i have first of all let me start by apologizing for missing a couple of sessions no nah, okay no problem um um for me the whole, the whole uh, message has sunk in deep yep especially the book of the book of luke yes uh it was luke 14:16 yes yes if we can if we can go there please yeah 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 the the supper yes yes so we see that Mm-hmm. Yes, Jesus yes, has yes. prepared a feast for us. Yes. And the Bible could have easily said Jesus has prepared a, a meal, um, a lunch, yeah. a roast, or just some common words. But why does the Bible say great feast? Yes. The Bible says great feast because if I invite you to my house and I tell you that I have prepared a great feast for you, mm-hmm. what am I trying to say? what what comes to your mind what comes to your mind you'd think mm. chicken you'd think lamb you'd think uh, pork you'd think like you'd think different things like whatever is to your liking so if you don't like pork there's lamb so if you don't like lamb there's chicken if you don't like chicken there's turkey like yeah. what i'm what i'm trying to say is when the bible says the great feast it means that you see we are different we all uh, like different things all these things that we like all these things that we want they are already in christ that is the great feast yes the good life the the security whatever it is it's already in christ so these people who are invited to the great feast they are out here chasing after what is already in the feast mm. i'm chasing a, a a chicken restaurant i'm chasing a shawarma restaurant i'm chasing all these things and they are already provided in the feast free of charge you see mm. so that is I, i think when the when the when the when the word was being shared that is what i caught christ has already prepared all these things for me all the things that i'm chasing right now at this very second they are already prepared for me but we as believers we are still out here chasing things that Christ they are already found in Christ we are looking for them in other sources mm. i'm trying to i'm i'm explaining the same point circles yeah. Yeah. but i don't know if it's making the same impact to every the way it's made an impact on me like i am chasing things that Christ has provided so why am i chasing mm-hmm. i i just need to accept the invitation and sit at the table and enjoy the feast mm-hmm. Wow, wow, that is really really profound. Actually I've even opened it up in uh, in another way I didn't see. I, I didn't see the angle of the supper actually has everything that you're chasing about. Uh that that's yeah. another opening, that's another revelation actually because the things actually that we are chasing, we are only chasing after things to satisfy ourselves. The supper is all about Correct. satisfying uh, our hunger. Mm-hmm. And the hunger is yes. hunger of many things, hunger of money, hunger of good life, hunger of food, hunger of clothing. Yeah. So the supper is it's it's an it's a it's an explanation or a, a picture of satisfaction. Mm-hmm. All right. So there is already mm-hmm. satisfaction mm-hmm. in the supper of Christ, but we are here mm-hmm. ourselves chasing after vanity kind of supper, forgetting that we already mm-hmm. have a free one. You see, so yeah. I that that's that's really powerful. That's really powerful. Actually, I didn't see it in that angle. Thanks, thanks so much, Esther. Doreen, please tell Hi. us something concerning that. Uh, you can put on the mic, uh, Doreen, please.
can you hear us? You can put on the microphone, Doreen. Uh, I can see maybe probably she uh, she's a bit uh, off connection. So Salim, tell mm -hmm. tell us something meanwhile. As, uh, uh, yeah. Thank you so much once again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a verse that just came on my mind. Mm -hmm. when, when Jesus told this rich guy, uh, if he really wants to go to heaven, he should give out everything that he has. Yeah. And uh, later Jesus said, mm -hmm. it is easier for a camel to enter that uh, small hole of a yeah. needle mm -hmm. than, than the rich mm -hmm. to enter heaven. One of the things that uh, as basically as human beings that we find to, to engage ourselves in is that we think the wealth of this world, everything that is in, in this world, look at the atheists and the people that have accumulated wealth mm. in a way that uh, uh, they think it is all that they have, even if they die, that is what they have. Mm. The other day, I think it was last year, we saw this rich man from Zimbabwe. Mm. He had accumulated wealth. He had all the girls that he could have. Mm. What I'm trying to say is that there are things in this world that they may seem so good, pleasure about that particular moment. But at the end of the day, the Bible says that this car, 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 wide path, mm -hmm. it might look so good and so beautiful, but it leadeth to a place that is, uh, that is full of destruction and all that. So I think as much as material possession is good, having a beautiful house here on earth is good, having a beautiful car, having all those things that any human being might desire, all those things might be good. But if we keep on keeping on thinking that they will give us satisfaction, they will give us that assurance of having a certain privilege in life without having God in that. I love what uh, Easter has said, that that, that supper, the, there's a greater supper, mm -hmm. and, and that greater supper is found in Christ himself. That is where we can find all these things that have been given to us freely, mm -hmm. for us to enjoy, for us to, 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 to find peace even in those things, because we can have all these things here mm -hmm. on earth, but are they giving us peace? But there's this, this supper, this great supper, whereby there's this person who has prepared it, prepared it for us, and that is Jesus himself. So our focus here should be, should be God. I love the verse that you shared my, uh, from the book of Matthew. Mm. Seek ye first. There's a part that people keep on jumping. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, mm. and all things shall be added unto you. Mm. So all these things, what are these things? Are they material things? Are they material things? So th this is what the kingdom has, mm. and much more with its righteousness, mm. that righteousness that is from God. And then all these things shall be added unto us. There's great gain, great gain. What, what, what do you mean by great gain? Life in abundance, mm. as much as we shall receive it, up there in heaven, mm -hmm. but here on earth, we shall receive it in abundance, based on the satisfaction that is from God Himself. That is what I can say. Wow, mm -hmm. thanks, Alim. I think that's that's really really uh, powerful. Mm -hmm. And even as uh, maybe a check, if uh, there's anyone else want to speak, I like to say there's one thing that I've always felt in my heart that uh, we tend to think that if we have a huge ministry. Or uh, you, you see, I have like 1,000 people listening when maybe I'm, I'm here doing a Bible study online. That's, that's how I'm making God happy. Mm. Probably fine. Those are, those are good things. But the best thing that you should know, mm -hmm. even if you hear God calling you and telling you, go and preach to a certain person only. Go and preach to that person because obedience is better than sacrifice. For example, I've been doing Bible studies since last year, April, with a certain lady. She's called uh, Joyce. Today, she did not join us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just felt in my heart, God telling me that 
find someone, just one person mm-hmm. that you can do Bible study together. Mm-hmm. And all that time when I'm preparing the Bible study, God is speaking to me new things. Mm-hmm. And I came to understand, what if God was only using me to speak to this person so that as I do the research, he's talking to me through the word. So you might even be teaching someone else out there and mm-hmm. telling them about the, the goodness of Christ and this and this only to discover that the Holy Spirit wanted you to teach that person mm-hmm. so that he can teach you. You see, mm-hmm. maybe the, even the goal is not the other person. The goal might be even you, that you yourself, you learn the Bible, you study as you're preparing that today, someone, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit is speaking to you because every time I'm reading something out to people, I always see new things. They come up, They like what Easter has just said about the supper. Supper is a representation of satisfaction and many things. That, and you're like, poop, 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 things are popping out and you're like, wow. So let's focus on the assignment. Let's not focus on, on uh, trying to make ourselves look good mm-hmm. because God looks at the intentions of our heart. He mm-hmm. doesn't look at the crowd. He doesn't look at the way people look at things. He doesn't look at the mega church. He doesn't look at all this. We can, we can be four of us here or five of us here, mm-hmm. but we are a big, big team according to God mm-hmm. because he's looking at the intentions of our hearts mm-hmm. because people can be tens and tens of thousands of people, but what they have is all about mm-hmm. this one came with this car, this one has a new suit. Probably their, their intentions are different mm-hmm. and there's only one person who is, the intention is right there. And the year we are five, who is more blessed? You never know. I'm just giving an example. So let's focus on the on the main thing. So I don't know if there's anyone else who has something else to say. Doreen, I don't know if you can hear me. Also, I don't know, Lillian, if you can hear me. Uh, if you can hear me, please, you can uh, say something. Uh, let me just uh, give it a minute or something. If uh, there are they are far, we can uh, wind up from there. These videos, are I always post them on YouTube. You can check them on YouTube. I have a, a YouTube channel called Keith Mooki and also on my Facebook. I always post the videos there. You can also share them to other people so that they can also learn. Doreen, please, I see you're on. Tell us something. Doreen, can you Hello, hear me? Hello, everyone. Sorry for joining late. My internet has been acting up. It's okay. And um, I'm actually speaking. Hello, you guys, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah, my, my internet is kind of acting up. Mm. I'm not sure whether you can hear me well, but I've joined you guys late. So I've actually decided that I'm just going to wait for the video on YouTube or Facebook, and then I'm going to watch it and learn what you guys have learned today. All right, all right. No problem. God bless you also even for showing up at the last minutes. You also encourage us. At least when we see someone coming up through, we also get encouraged at some time. Uh, I'm sure people are always busy with different things uh, time and again. But uh, whenever you get time, just always pop in and uh, check out something. I think today our Bible study has been really quick. I've really, I'm really trying to always be as fast as possible. It's even before 10. But thank you very much. Have a blessed, blessed time. In case you have any query, please always feel free anytime. Me and Napenda Kuonga concerning the Bible. So thank you very much. Let's say a word of prayer before we, we wind up. Dear Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for your yet another word that you've given us. We adore your name and give you praise and give you honor. Thank you, Lord. Let it sink in our minds. Let it burn like fire, O oh God. And even it may rectify the things that you have always done wrong, O oh God. And may you speak to us through your Holy Spirit and let us impact your words, O oh God, as they have been written. Let us be the doers of the word, but not only listeners and hearers, O oh God. We thank you and we worship you. Bless us as you sleep and be with us, O oh God. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed time. Amen. See you in the next one. Bye. Thank you, Keith and Salim. Good night. Uh, good night. Bye. Bye.